This is the DMT One to One Show, episode 42, on the 9th of January 2014, an interview with Sebastian Dittmann from Audiobus. Hello everyone and welcome to the DMT One to One Show, where we chat with uh, cool uh, music, tech startups and uh, interesting uh, projects. And uh, this week it's a real pleasure to welcome on the show Sebastian Dittmann, who does business development at Audiobus. So hi Sebastian and great to have you on, how's it going? Hi there, I'm fine. Uh, great to be here. It's a real pleasure to have you on, and uh, I've been uh, uh, following Audiobus since you, you guys launched. Uh, I had uh, uh, Ashley Elson, who's a, a you know a, a friend of ours, uh, introduced me to the company when he did a little piece. Uh, I think it was back in January of, of last year, actually, mm -hmm. when you were in uh, first beta. And uh, so I want to hear all about uh, how Audiobus developed. But first of all, let's give our listeners a taste of what the company does. So, what is Audiobus, and what what is the core concept behind behind the the company and the app? Um, Audiobus basically allows you to route audio from iOS apps to other iOS apps. So you can combine your apps that you already have with each other. Uh, like you can use a synthesizer, filter it through an effects app, and save it in a third app, which could be a looper, a multi track recorder, and so on and so forth. Yeah. And so uh, was that uh, always technically possible or was it was uh, something in the iOS environment that changed that allowed you to put this into place when you started developing it probably back in uh, uh, towards the end of 2012, I imagine? Actually, it was always possible. We were just the first ones who did this. Um, Apple has introduced uh, something similar in, in uh, actually we were we, we launched this in, in December 2010. Let me don't let me say this wrong. 2012. 12, yeah. So um, uh, and in June 2013 or September, depending on where you want to see it, Apple introduced some interweb audio technology, which does a similar thing. But um, um, Audiobus is uh, going strong. People don't seem to um, well uh, lose interest in it, and um, we're now almost at. 400 compatible apps, like are roughly a year after we've launched. So we're every day there's a new app that becomes compatible. Yeah, yeah. So, As yeah. you said, you know, it's it's a when you when you look at the app, you know, it's it's a no-brainer. This is something that people needed, especially to make music on iOS devices. So uh, when you uh, decided to go about building this, so you know, what was your first primary concern in in in, in creating the app? Um, the uh, I I come from a um, Audiobus is actually a collaboration between two two uh, music developer music app developers. Um, I um, worked on or I'm, I'm still working on an app called Sound Prism, and uh, Mike, uh, my partner in crime, is uh, working on something that's called Loopy Loopy HD, which is a really great looper. Uh, used by many people, uh, and um, in 2000, and basically, like in 2012, Mike just said, "Well, we really need some to get some audio into Loopy," and he he, um, he uh, developed this technology basically because he's has, he's got a background in networking and computer science and that kind of stuff. And um, since I was, uh, I've been part of the iOS music community since a couple of years, he asked some people like, hey, is this even possible? And everyone pointed to me as someone who had some experience with like the Apple review process and what they might allow. And we got into talking and we just, it just clicked and we, we uh, said, well, let's do this together. I'm going to um, help you with the marketing and some of the design and some of the decisions. And um, I, I had the idea to make it a separate app as opposed to just an SDK because that has some some benefits because, well, it just, you need an app to put put all of this together, basically like a, yeah. like a board where you could stick everything in. It just makes more sense. It's easier to manage. Um, and uh, that was... That's when we founded Audiobus, basically the the company. Absolutely, and you know, uh, building the app must have been a challenge as well, because uh, uh, you know, it's essentially it's, it's a routing app, but it's it, it, I guess it wasn't. Uh, uh, it, it must have been hard to get to that level of design that you are at now, where it's it's super simple to actually get get things working and get things moving on on, on that front. So, uh, was that was it a little bit? You know, how do, how do you find that process? Because for people that haven't used Audiobus before, it's almost a bit like a, an IFTT recipe in the sense that you you, you, you decide the workflow of, of the sound from one app to the other uh, through the app, and that and that sort of helps shape your process of working on iOS devices and making music. 
Yeah, um, well, I, I'm, I'm actually a fan of just um, reducing uh, features from something that you had an idea for until yeah. it, it's just obvious how to use it because everybody has a really tiny attention span nowadays. Yeah. And if you're a musician, you don't want to think about how to use this tool. You ideally just want to use it. Um, so the the first iteration of Audiobus, we just um, we reduced its features until we came up with something that it is right now. Yeah, uh, I have to say we're working on Audiobus two right now, which is a lot more capable. But we had to launch with something like Audiobus one, like the simple interface, like just a couple of inputs, a filter port, and then. Uh, output port because that was what we think people were able to understand yeah. um, and, and just immediately grasp how it works. Understand, of course, they can. I'm not calling anyone like uh, simple minded, but it's really it's a complicated uh, system. And uh, if we had put everything in there, like multiple uh, routing possibilities and so on. And um, also, there's another. Uh, there's another uh, limitation there, and that is what devices can actually support. Yeah. So um, iPads are great as as tools for music making because every application is basically a self-contained little instrument, um, and therefore you just open it up, and typically it just it's immediately clear with what you can do with it. And when you then com can combine these, it's like a little Lego box of fun little things that you can put together and actually create some serious mu music with it. And, uh, well, they're professional tools by now. At least there are some out there that can definitely be put into that category. Um, and um, But iPads back then, I mean, we, we developed Audiobus over, over the course of end of 2011 and 2012 and back then we only had iPad 2s and iPad 3s which weren't that great with regards to what, what the processing power was of them. Sure. Um, so we had to limit how many apps people uh, were able to use at the same time because well obviously if you just chain 10 apps after each other you're going to run out of CPU capability, RAM and so on and so forth. Yeah. Yeah and uh you know, you were talking about how many apps have now are now supporting Audiobus as well. So that that's amazing. And you started out uh, with a sort of a closed beta SDK uh, release, and then you released it. I think it was uh, probably April time, uh, twenty thirteen, uh, so somewhere around then. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so how how did that uh, approach work for you, and uh, how did you get you know the, the, the you know the big guys from 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 this uh, field like Cork, for example, to jump on board and and uh, uh, Use the SDK. Actually, uh, it's, it's not entirely correct. Um, I, I, uh, we launched it with uh, twelve different apps. Uh, I, I right. picked picked some apps that I had good relations uh, to the developers already, sure. who I directly had worked with in the past, and who I knew that they uh, would be a good bundle of applications to use right out of the box. Um, but we immediately um, opened up our not immediately, but but I think earlier than, soon, than, yeah. than than March or April. I would have to look it up. I'm sorry, it's been a oh, busy cool. year. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, so, but it was it wasn't really a problem getting the big guys on board because we had a solution to a problem that everybody was having. Yeah. So we were surprised that they um, got on board. What there was never any coaxing of us to get I don't know Cork or Yamaha into supporting it. It just they works, they so. simply they, everybody was seemed to be smart about it and they just added it and at some point even Apple put it uh, put it in there which surprised everyone because well Apple doesn't just put somebody else's third party SDK in their products yeah but um, well we we worked together with them as as much as I can uh, say that we basically gave them uh, access to it and they were super cool and they put it in there yeah yeah and from your side do you have any ways to uh, monitor what people are uh, using or from even from the, the third party apps front uh, whether they're seeing usage of, of Audiobus within their applications because that would be quite an interesting uh, data point to see what apps are being used the most or what's happening on that front but I guess maybe it's just a, a black box and you don't really have much information on that front. Uh, we're, we're looking into that currently we're not like oh, releasing any statistics about that but sure. we might at some point but we um, we're always careful with what we what we uh, send out about user data. We're not going to release anything that people haven't of course. haven't agreed to. But uh, it's definitely interesting to see what what kind of apps people are are using. Yeah, and things have moved pretty fast. I mean, uh, 
from two years ago when you know still seeing a musician on stage with an iPad was still a rarity and now it's becoming pretty commonplace so uh, on, on that front uh, have you had a lot of feedback from musicians themselves that are using the app uh, on stage or in a live setting and and what um, they what they like to do with it yeah we we had a couple of of um, musicians I think the I mean the typical ones are like Jordan Rudis who just does he lives iOS music he just gets his hands on everything that's that's new and and uh, fancy and in, in that regard um, but um, what surprised me was um, that Vernon Reed uses it for their for his guitar setups and in combination awesome. with effects apps that just completely blew our minds because well we, we just did that and then there's this great uh, guitar player uh, comes up and, and and uses that and his like really sophisticated setups with with yeah. all of his other stuff in there um, but um, what what's really interesting to me is uh, we we made a forum like we have an audiobus forum and that just is completely taking off like there are thousands of people every day there uh, talking about iOS music sharing their creations talking about how to do this it kind of has become the the hub of iOS music the 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 scene where people can just go to and ask questions and the community is incredibly nice they're actually helping each other and um I mean, this is kind of I'm I'm, I'm making doing an advertisement for our forum, but that's really my opinion of it. I'm sure. completely surprised by it. We're not we're not uh, moderating it much or at all, and everybody's just really really helpful. So there's the, you can see how musicians are creating projects together. Even like some some of them are actually collaborating over Dropbox, so they can download it <laughs> to their iPads and upload it again. It's a it's a crazy process. Yeah, and, um, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, absolutely. There's, there's not many many places where people can go and talk about this stuff. I mean, of course, uh, uh, Palm Sounds is one of the f few sites that really covers this this uh, area uh, in depth. And then you get you got loads of uh, you know uh, app developers support sites that don't have much yeah. aside from like a static page usually or an email. So that's that's kind of a difficult situation to be in for people that want to find out more because yeah. it's often not that easy to uh, get support from the app developers themselves and so you created this community of people that can actually find some answers and and yeah. have a chat and, and that's that's really uh, pretty cool on, on the hardware front uh, how, how are you finding the hardware side of things is evolving uh, for uh, ios music are you seeing a lot of development or are we still just seeing essentially keyboard controllers and and, and that kind of stuff there's there's definitely more and more hardware um, coming coming up next. Um, the Audibus 2 version that we're going to release is also going to um, support multi-channel uh, hardware devices. Yeah. Um, so you can make that part of your setup and save save presets with that. And we're doing that for a reason because we can see that people are, like one of the biggest threads again on the Audibus forum is what kind of interface do I use with my iPad? Yeah. And it's really hard to find the find a find a good one because um, you can basically use everything that's class compliant on your iPad. So yeah. if you have a if you have an older uh, class compliant device, there like <laughs> either either just MIDI USB MIDI yeah. or or a hardware interface, it just works. Yeah. But finding out how to set it up, like you have to have a camera connection kit. You need to know, okay, is this is this cell powered for the iPad? Yeah. Do you, do I have to have a powered USB hub? Um, should I get a specific uh, one, like from I don't know, Focusrite or the new iConnect MIDI, which does audio and so on? There's a huge amount of of, of progress in the in the hardware front. There. Yeah, sure, absolutely, and and you have to be careful as well of of uh, the, the devices you choose too, because I I think uh, the first iOS specific keyboard I bought when I was traveling a lot uh, a few a couple of years ago was uh, uh, a che cheapish keyboard from a maker I won't name. Uh, well, it was, uh, no, I can not name it. It was it was M Audio, and uh, literally like the first time I put, no, the third time I used it and I put the USB uh, cable into the. A mini USB port, it just it just fell apart. It's just, <laughs> it was just like one of those things. Okay, so this is not greatly built. So, but the, the, this iRig has been pretty pretty great uh, so far. So, so enjoying that. And uh, um, and finally, looking at uh, some of the apps that have caught your eye uh, for uh, the audience that uh, you know that you'd recommend for them to go and check out. Is there anything in particular that's uh, been uh, updated or has been released recently uh, that that you think is uh, pretty outstanding? Um. 
I mean, it's it's always tricky when I when I suggest apps to people because I'm basically running the platform. That <laughs> yeah, you're, you're like agnostic. <laughs> I, I I shouldn't be commenting on it. I'm just going to comment on what people have commented on. Okay, great, it's yeah. not my opinion. That's good. Something that that surprised me because I it wasn't on my radar at all. Was the there was this Electrify Next application okay. that came out out of nowhere, and uh, all of a sudden there were people like. Hundreds of comments about that kind of thing. Uh, it's just basically a groove box, and people really like that. Although I think it's it, it's a, it has a has a like an iOS seven e interface and design, which I kind of like. But it it <laughs> even uh, the newer devices, you can get to the to the uh, borders of what's possible on there quite quite fast. But yeah. it's it's only going to get better. Yeah. And then um, a lot of people are really liking the bias app i think from po positive grid the it's an amp mod of uh, uh, what's it called um it models guitar amps oh, okay. and model then you can yeah, import sure. that into uh, other another application and okay. people seem to really like that Awesome. I, I don't play guitar, so I haven't really used many of the Me uh, guitar. Me I, uh, I, I don't. I don't play the guitar, and I don't know how to use a groove box. So uh, sadly, <laughs> sad. <laughs> I'm just commenting on what people like, Excellent. not myself. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, uh, thanks so much for your time, and, uh, and hopefully we are. You know, it's uh, you can find all the information on AudioBus uh, on. Uh, audio audiob.us uh, and you can also of course uh, uh, type audiobus in your app store in your iPad or in, in you know on your iTunes stores uh, and it will come up uh, it's uh, it's easy to find uh, and uh, thanks so much for your time and hopefully we're going to see audiobus version 2 coming out sometime uh, later this year definitely that's great well thanks so much and again uh, check out oh, audiobus can I can yeah, I, sure. Can I plug Audiobus 2? If you want to keep up to date with Audiobus 2, yeah, you sure. can just sign up for, uh, you can just go on to audiob.us slash 2, like T W O, and we'll email you once it's out. It should be early in 2014 if you're interested in it. That's awesome. That's very cool. Well, thanks so much for your time, and thanks so much for listening to the DMT One to One Show. It comes out every week. We interview some uh, pretty awesome uh, companies and apps, uh, like uh, this week. Uh, you can find everything on digitalmusictrends.com, or you can also find our weekly news show where we discuss the latest news in the digital music industry. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great week, and until next time.